Thanks, Jim. Well, unfortunately, tonight, you know, th this happens occasionally. Our guest was unable to make it. Um, Dan Cohen and one of his uh, his friends were actually going to to be talking to us tonight. And Dan and I talked and decided it was better just to reschedule than him have it him do it alone. So we actually have a, had a contingency plan in place just in case we had lost a guest. And it really is to have a little bit different discussion. And, and first, I, I really wanted to start with the idea of picking everyone here's brains. So what I'd like to do is pose the question to you. What was the most fun thing that you did either at a club or a division that you would recommend that other people do? You know, that other organizations, other groups emulate. Um, so what, what did someone do? What did you do personally set up? What, what was that event that really was exciting to you and, and as a modeler really made your day? Anybody think of anything? I mean, we all know, you know, standard events with clinics and that, but were there other things that, that, that your organization has done you thought were really innovative and exciting? Can I, can I chime in? Uh, Jump in. This is, I, I'm looking to get 10, so there's only about 30 of us. So, e so that's one in three of you has got to come up with something. So <laughs> well, pretty uh, simple math here. here, guys. I'm in the daylight cool. division out here in the PCR out on the West Coast. And the most enjoyable thing I've done in that organization was uh, to get my master builder of structure certificate back in the day and to go through that process. And uh, what I want to do now is uh, get the rest of them to become an MMR. So that's my goal now. But that was that was really enjoyable, that whole process. So the process of achievement was really a big enjoyment. Cool. Any, any others? Anybody else, you know? A tour, I, you know. One of the things uh, at our club, the Chatham Auto Railroad Club uh, up here in Ontario, Canada, our club got together and went down to Ohio. And Pat's going to have to uh, help me out with the name. Sugar Creek, the, Ohio, where the roundhouse is. Yeah, it's the uh, Age of Steam, Pat. Yes, it is. And I'll tell you, if any of you... If any of you out there can make that trip with a group, it is worthwhile. And uh, there's nothing but live steam. It's like going back in time. This so place were, you able, just, were you able to ahead. do that as a day trip or was that an overnight trip? That was a day trip. Day trip. Day trip. So a day field trip. That's a, those are, yeah. I think that's a great idea to, to think about those day field trips that go to someplace really interesting. It was a long drive, and they thought we'd never get there, but we did. <laughs> it was a That's long good. drive. Yeah, this, this place is out in the middle of nowhere. It's <laughs> in the uh, Amish uh, country, and it's just beautiful. You, you, when you get there, you will not believe it. The, the man that constructed it, uh, he's passed away, um, but his family still runs it. And as I say, if you, if you like steam locomotives, and uh, railroading, it, to walk through this roundhouse is, is just fantastic. Yeah, you know, one of, the, one of the things I found here locally is that those organizations that have what I'll call railroad interest activities, uh, here are the Niles Canyon Railway, um, they're really very interested in partnering to do a trip like that and introduce you, because quite frankly, from their perspective, we're their best chance to go find new volunteers. So it's, it's something that really works well. That's, that's good, Gary. Great. It, it, yeah, any other thought processes? The, it was real heavy on my, e uh, my uh, visa bill too. <laughs> I ended up buying all the tickets. <laughs> 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 then I had to turn on collect. <laughs> so, so an area that that's interesting is, you know, one of the things that, we facilitate a lot as both clubs and divisions is what I'm going to call the exchange of no longer valued modeling materials. Um, in other words, buying and selling stuff. Uh, I'm curious, has anyone had a really unique experience with a way a club managed that? 
you know, yes. for a, you know, an auction versus a swap meet versus I'm just really curious about different exciting ways to manage that concept of providing a way for people to exchange, you know, products that things and money. In the end of October, uh, we are going to have a auction sale with our clubs putting on and we'll be selling all kinds of, uh, you know, the things that people want to auction off, get some ready cash in their pocket. And uh, it's the uh, it's the Chatham Model Railroad Club, of course. We are quite active in a lot of that stuff, and it it really means a lot to keep your members together. We have never lost any real members. It's just they just stick around forever. One one of the nice things about the auction that we provided at uh, in October, uh, it's it's been going on for like fifty two years, and um, it, it's a way of. Uh, estates being sold yep uh we handle the estates of uh members and other uh model railroaders that are in our uh divisions and in, in the region and uh, by handling that then we just turn the money over to the uh family when we're done so it, it is a good way to uh get rid of excess and also uh to uh dispose of estates any other any other other than auctions any other exciting things you know uh ways you can do silent auctions anything like that that you've seen that you thought was a really great idea i can tell you i haven't attended a meeting because i'm out in minnesota but the new jersey division has a free table at their meetings so it's another way to you know me, I would take advantage of that, certainly, because then it would just put another project on my table, make me want to build something out of it or, or whatever. So I, I, I like the idea of that, too. While the auctions help our division, Twin Cities Division does an auction, too. It helps the division out, helps people get rid of stuff. Um, but the free table also, I think, is a, a great engaging idea. Interesting. Cool. Another thing I feel that we've done in our club is that uh, make and take for our WOD district, uh, uh, Western Ontario Division. I had a make and take on doing the trees uh, that I make that you see in my background. Uh, we're going to have a clinic on that coming up soon on uh, new tracks. So, uh, yeah, that, that was a thing that everybody enjoyed. They all took home a tree that day. I didn't think to be able to do it, but I supplied all the materials and we made sure they had everything there to work with. And then I also show, showed them how I did it on the uh, slide project. You know, it, it all works out. It keeps the interest going, keeps people busy. They even brought their kids with them and they were building the trees too. So <laughs> it turned out to be quite a day. Quite the uh, Tom Sawyer moment, moment yeah. with the fence and all. That's good. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> Anyway, I think I talked enough. So that's an interesting, that's an interesting kind of, that's a way of doing a clinic that's kind of a, almost a build-along clinic. Are any other clinic thoughts of things that have, have gone really well as far as clinics? Well, our, our division every month has a, uh, has a display table and we, uh, we vote on uh, popular vote and it's just bragging rights from of from that to the next month, uh, if you win, but that allows, uh, and we'll always have a topic that's usually based on the previous uh, month's clinic. Uh, we always have a presentation, and if that presentation happens to be on freight cars of a particular area, then next month's contest will be bring a freight car. But at the end of the year, we have almost a consolidated and the best fun we've had with that is to use in the resources of the of the division. And there's probably 40 to 50 members that show up for every division meeting every month uh, and a couple of hundred scattered throughout the, uh, the region. Uh, but we encourage people to get a discount and we've used plastic models like uh, an old uh, AHM uh, uh, coaling tower. 
with the idea that you purchase the same kit uh, for a very reasonable price and then let the members chip in to, to help defray the cost. So everybody buys a kit and you make it so cheap that everybody wants to buy one. And then three months later, you have a presentation and uh, kind of a, a popular vote judging to who did the best kit bash of that particular model. And we've done everything from a freight house to a passenger station and the idea is to turn it into something it's not. So if you got a coaling tower, it can be turned into uh, one guy made a covered bridge. Another guy made a, uh, uh, a station out of a coaling tower. Uh, so it's kit bashing and you take three months, everybody builds the same kit and the laughs and enjoyment that you have after three months of very creative modelers bring in what started out as pieces, and you're also allowed to buy two or three. Uh, one fellow uh, built a, uh, a, a roundhouse out of multiple uh, Kibri station kits, and it, he built an eight-stall roundhouse. It was just fabulous. Uh, but it's using that creativity. Everybody starts with the same basic components and then you just let your imagination run wild. And in three months time, you bring it into the meeting and we, uh, we all discuss what we did and what we tried to do. And uh, it was, it just really is the most fun. Yeah, that's very good. So, so Cura, one question is, are there, things that you a division or a club provides that are essentially things that modelers can't necessarily provide themselves whether they be tools or i was thinking about you know for example a a, a car tune-up day where you bring your cars and all the tools are there and people to help you tune your cars up or something like that i'm wondering is there is there does anyone do that where they acquire things or have resources that individuals can't have, but you can have as a group and have it so folks can use them. Is there anything that, again, a way that to be part of the group and have a value in it? Does that happen for anyone? Well, I, my, my division did that about uh, three months ago. Uh, now, everybody brought their own cars uh, and it was over two meetings, but we kind of pooled the tools. Everybody brought their, their toolbox. So the clinic was tune up your cars, passenger freight, uh, whatever, non-revenues. And over uh, spending about 45 minutes of our meeting time with just hands-on. And of course, it was aimed at our newer members. Fortunately, our division is growing and by having these hands-on participations um, the word gets out and folks come and learn how to do it now the ones we the years ago we don't we don't have tools available but we were did a um, a clinic two months running on weathering so we went out and we bought at the local uh, Michael's or craft shop. We bought powdered pastels. We bought craft paint. We bought cheap brushes. We brought little water trays and knickknacks, the, the kind of kid, the stuff you would do with, with Cub Scouts, <laughs> very inexpensive. And the division still owns those. So uh, we're th even thinking about doing another weathering clinic because we have very skilled weathering people, authors, um, who just enjoy doing that. And we have all that material available and it's in, stored in one of the members' garage right now. It's a, just a bunch of uh, little plastic shoe boxes that have all these kits in it. So Division can buy, hmm. buy things very inexpensively and make them available to a, a mass hands-on clinic. That's great ideas. Great ideas. Well, 
You know, one of the things is it's sometimes nice just to have conversations and get everybody's thinking a, a little bit about a specific area. And um, we took advantage tonight of the fact that we didn't have a guest. Uh, we'll have him come back in the future. Um, but at this point, Jim, I, I think that's probably a, a good discussion for this evening, and we'll turn it back over to you. I think it was, I think it was a great discussion, and it shows – it shows the variety that's out there. And that's really what this segment was uh, hopefully uh, designed to do. I, I will mention one thing because I, I wasn't aware of this. When, when I was a division superintendent, this wasn't out there. It wasn't available to me. I understand now that the NMRA National will give money to a division that holds a, a, an event designed for member retention. And I understand if the division holds this meeting and notifies the NMRA National about it and gets it approved, then the NMRA National, I, I, and I you'll have to forgive me, I forget the, the a dollar amount, it's either 25 or $50. And I-, I, I actually, actually, Jim, the one I saw, I think it's 200. I, I was- blown away there's a 200 dollars, but it's limited to 100 divisions claiming it during the year so there's a time frame involved but, but there's an I, individual uh, individual reimbursement of 50 dollars yeah I, that's that's the one i think i mm -hmm. i had heard oh, yeah. about but you know to me that's that's really significant because when i was a superintendent one of the first things that i ran into is I had to find a way to get money because I had to rent space. I had to spend money. So where, how was I going to get money? Because the NMRA gave me nothing. So the dues, you know, as far as I was concerned, you know, that didn't help me at all as a division superintendent. I was out there by myself trying to figure out how, how on earth I'd find a place that we could get, you know, some people to, to uh, be able to get in it and be able to do something and where, where was I going to get chairs and tables and, and so forth? And, and that, to me, having that capability of national to, to fund some of that get start money, to me, I think is, is a, a major, major uh, new program for the NMRA that I would, I would think that any division or local club would want to take advantage of. 